what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so i'm finally checking out how adam would book steve austin's heel turn i know you guys had been asking me to check this out for quite some time it's just there been so many other videos i had been trying to check out as well but i was going to make my way to checking this out i love this how he would book series he, he has some pretty good like like fantasy uh booking ideas that i would actually love to uh to have seen a lot of these actually play out on television so this one should be a good one we all know stone cold steve austin's heel turn really didn't work he tried he gave it his best effort but him turning heel at wrestlemania 17 it it didn't work because he was still too over like when he started aligning himself with the two-man power trip with triple h that kind of started to take off just a little bit like he was doing some pretty evil stuff but once again he was still super over so and they didn't really get to the point of nuclear heat like i think they wanted to so um it was just one of those type of things where it's like it's stone cold at the end of the day yeah, yeah it's stone cold that's all you could really say like he was still gonna be beloved by so many fans so we're gonna check that check this out see how you would have did this and uh i'm looking forward to it man i know uh he's gonna you know probably come up with some creative ideas so let's, what are the let's worst decisions wwe has ever made now i'm not talking about business decisions the xfl wwe world restaurant or diesel as wwe champion ranked quite highly there nor do i mean patterns of decisions like cena wins low roman wins low or putting part-timers over their up and comers those are all mm. cumulatively very bad but each individual choice is relatively harmless i mean which single decisions made by the wwe have had the most significant impact on their creative product for the worse, I can think of three that stand head and shoulders above them all. NXT 2.0, taking mm. Monday Night Raw to three hours, uh -huh. and the 2001 here. He is spot on. The NXT 2.0, just that whole, that whole brand switch just reeks of Monday Night Raw light or SmackDown light. It just doesn't reeks of what we, what we used to love with the black and gold. Making Raw three hours was one of the worst things they could have ever did. It's still one of the worst things. It needs to be two hours. Three hours is just too long, bro. Just make it two hours, bro. And then, you know, arguably some people can say turning Stone Cold Steve Austin heel was not the right move. Heel turn of Stone Cold Steve Austin. I mean, you knew that would be the last one in that three because that's the title of this video. I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Fun. No, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Have you heard of him? He's the Snake Boy. Not that Snake Boy. The other Snake Boy. There we go. That's the Snake Boy. The Rattlesnake Boy. Steve Austin debuted in WWE in 1996 after a cup of coffee in ECW where he ended up after being fired by Eric Bischoff via fax machine because he didn't think Steve Austin had much more of an upside in the wrestling business. Mm. It's never fun to watch your dad make a mistake. It's never fun to watch your dad cry. It's never fun to watch your dad be loaded into a garbage truck where he'll presumably be crushed and killed. <laughs> Poor dad. Anyway, WWE debuted Austin as the ringmaster because they're dumb too. But before yeah. long, he changed his name to Stone Cold, Cold Steve, Steve Austin. Austin. A trash talking heel so called because of his lack of empathy. He won King of the Ring, created Austin 316, had a hugely underrated match with Bret Hart at Survivor Series 96, won the Royal Rumble 97, a year after debuting, had a hugely rated match with Bret Hart at WrestleMania mm -hmm. 13, turned face in the process, then began WWE's process of slowly heating up Austin for his inevitable coronation at the next year's WrestleMania, a journey that almost ended in tragedy when at SummerSlam 97 and a botched pile driver from Owen Hart, mm -hmm. Austin compressed his neck, a single move which unwittingly oh, started God. a ticking clock on the rest of the Rattlesnake's career. Now, despite wrestling on borrowed time, Austin had one of the best, actually really short runs when you think about it in wrestling history, after being crowned oh. WWE champion, his feud with Vince took the company ahead in the ratings over WCW. His feud with Vince was legendary. That's why he's pretty much my all-time favorite wrestler. Bro. His feud with Vince McMahon single-handedly took them over the hump of Okay, now WWE they, or WWF at the time, they're on to something now. 
WCW was killing them in the ratings, but this is what started helping them because of this feud, because people could relate, because Stone Cold was so over, because people hated Vince. This is what catapulted them to new heights. 26 was an amazing year for the company. Not only did they have a white hot feud presiding over the main event, but their mid card was generating Triple H and The Rock, two mm -hmm. men who would also lead the company deeper into its most beloved era. Yeah. Now, The Rock ascended first, capturing the title by the end of the year. At Survivor Series 1999, a year later, Austin's neck issues caught up with him and he left to have surgery, returning full time 10 months later. Now, a lot happened in those 10 months in the big dubby dub dub da do da the rock triple h and to a lesser extent the big show had all been crowned wwe champion with rock and trips firmly cemented as co-faces of the company when he returned austin wasn't the only player in town and honestly that's why the attitude era was good mm -hmm. a diversity of huge draws rather than just one star that has to be protected at all costs cough john cena cough Roman Reigns, mm -hmm. cough Hulk Hogan. Austin was still crazy popular, do not get me wrong, but wasn't carrying the company on his back anymore. That fact, coupled with a general feeling that he'd accomplished all he could as a face, led Steve Austin to want to turn heel, which he did at WrestleMania X7, shaking hands with the devil himself, mm -hmm. Vincent Epic, Kennedy Epic McMahon, the man he'd spent the entirety of 1998 and most of 99 feuding with. He joined forces with Triple H, the man who'd organized him being hit with a car. They formed the two man. <laughs> the two man power trip. When you think about it, this dude, from a story point, like storyline standpoint, he aligned himself with the guy that hit him, tried to end his career. He said, fuck it. We good, bro. It was all a misunderstanding. <laughs> and Power Trip won all the gold. Triple H went out with an injury, and Austin pivoted into an unstable, whiny heel desperate for respect. Then Steve Austin checks notes fell in love with Vince McMahon, subjugating himself for Vince's amusement, making himself look foolish. This is Steve Austin. <laughs> Remember the guy's intense cool factor took the company to unparalleled heights in 98. Mm -hmm. Look, there he is in the cowboy hat. Then the alliance happened. Austin briefly returned to the old Stone oh, cold. cold. In one of the biggest pops in Raw history, WWE saw that pop and thought, can't have that, better turn him heel again. Got to think of the business after all. Austin turned heel again at the Invasion pay-per-view, joined the alliance, changed his music to a generic piece of trash. <laughs> he led the Alliance into that winner-take-all match at Survivor Series, and afterwards, he just kind of turned face because he didn't want to kiss Vince McMahon's bare asshole. That is enough to turn a man face, I suppose. <laughs> so why didn't the heel turn work? WWE took one of the most lucrative and, again, coolest characters and slowly stripped him of everything that made him great. Attitude, music, merch, crowd connection, and crucially, crucially, did it at a time where there wasn't anyone perfectly positioned to take his place. Mm. When they struck gold and turned the super hot, super babyface rock heel at Survivor Series 98, they had super babyface Stone Cold ready to fight him. Mm -hmm. The night after Mania X7, The Rock was written off TV and had to go and become, a, I believe it was a Beatle Duke. I forget exactly what the movie's about. Triple H was the next <laughs> biggest star, but they stapled him to Austin to make people actually boo him as if Vince McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, beating up Jim Ross, the Hardys, yeah. Lita with a Chair. Yeah. <laughs> Undertaker was the person they eventually picked to be the main face to go up against Austin, but he was just coming off the worst in-ring year of his career in 2000. Like, the fans really didn't like Undertaker in 2000. Like, they actually vote, I think, in the Wrestle Observer Newsletter Awards, he was voted the fans' least favorite personality. Kane Damn. was never really treated like a main event player. This Kurt Angle had been champion, but he was just entering into his program with Chris Benoit. I mean, the fact that at Backlash, the pay-per-view after WrestleMania X7, all the gold had to be on the line, that kind of illustrates the problem here. The hole left by The Rock of importance that people were struggling to fill. Also, the fact that the people didn't want to boo Austin. When people are tired... I, I said this, people, they liked him too. He was so over, they didn't want to boo him. It was hard to boom because it's like, I mean, I, I like Austin. Like, why I want, 
I don't want to boo him. <laughs> of a character being in a role, they will tell you with their voices and with their wallets, and neither of those things were the case. So WWE essentially just created a huge problem for themselves, fixing a problem that didn't exist beyond Austin creatively wanting to push himself. And he did some really good stuff, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Kumbaya, for the fact that this isn't Stone Cold Steve Austin, is really funny. He had mm -hmm. some great matches with Angle, the two-man mm -hmm. power trip versus Jericho and Benoit is one of Raw's best matches ever. But none of these things justify the fact that WWE at a time when they only had one tentpole, super draw, super babyface, turned him heel without a good enough plan to follow it up and torpedo their pay-per-views and weekly shows in the process. It is something that should never, ever, 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 ever have happened. It's one of their worst decisions of all time. There's absolutely no chance it. it would ever that. be a good idea. And under no circumstances should someone actually attempt it. And that's what you're about to do. Yep, that's what you're about to do. Let me have a go. All right, let's see what he does with this heel turn. Man, I'm very interested to see how he would do it. Wait, what's going on here? <laughs> And sure, Austin turning heel was a terrible idea, but don't worry, WWE make terrible creative decisions all the time. You can find out about each and every one of them first <laughs> by subscribing to our other wrestling channel, Wrestle Talk, for daily wrestling news videos. Get on over, give them a subscribe, and turn those notifications on for up to the minute breaking wrestling news. What the people want from me and sure i choose the topic for this video each month but what do you want from me austin should have just stunned vince mcmahon yeah. on raw the next night turn back face tricking vince mcmahon and maybe be a tweener going up against the rock austin mm -hmm. as a heel after mania x7 is a bad idea because of the specific circumstances surrounding it now if i could wave a magic wand and just keep the rock around between mania and SummerSlam, then sure mm -hmm. it's a fine idea delay the count of crabs movie run <laughs> super babyface rock versus super heel austin at backlash mm -hmm. keep that momentum going then at judgment day throw face triple h into the mix having given him enough time to turn all sorts of stuff you can do with taking some of the biggest feuds of the last few years and inverting the heel face alignment but i can't do that I, I, I simply can't do it. I'm a senator, Anakin. No, while a lot of these videos are fueled by wish fulfillment, you know, they should hire this guy or this person not being in this match means he might not have gotten injured. I also feel like I have to sort of stick to some sort of realistic brief. Austin has to turn heel. I have to let The Rock go and be the ugly bug Brahma bull. <laughs> and this all has to go down at WrestleMania X7 because these are the fundaments of the Austin heel turn and why it didn't mm -hmm. work. So we start at WrestleMania X7 and earlier in the night, Shane beats Vince clean as a whistle, easy as you like. But after the match, Vinnie Mac is carted out by medical officials and taken to a local medical facility. He's gone from the WrestleMania card and we do not see him again for the rest of the night. Backstage before the main event, we see Austin on the phone, Michael Cole with his absolutely horrendous frosted tips. <laughs> How could you dye your hair so blonde, Michael? You look stupid. And look, you've got a dark beard as well with dyed blonde hair, you f***ing idiot. <laughs> Cole comes up to him, asks him, you know, what's this all about? And Austin says, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is that after coming back to the WWF, this is the time where he will finally, finally, be crowned world champion. Nothing else matters to him, not his health, not his life, and not his pride. The only thing he cares about is becoming world champion, and that's the bottom line, because I said so. The main event of the night, Rock versus Austin, and the match plays out pretty much as it did in yeah. real life. Austin starting hot, trying to hit Rock with the championship, cutting the Rock open. There's a rabid look in Austin's eyes. And mm -hmm. JR and Heyman play up the fact that he hasn't been champion for a year and a half. He needs this to prove that he hasn't lost everything that made him stone cold Steve Austin. Like where what this is, going. is the limit? Like Austin will push himself going. too to get what he wants. Austin hits the stunner. Good <laughs> God, what a stunner. But Rock kicks Good out God, and Austin stunner. is beside himself. <laughs> he gestures to the back and that's when he comes out. Not Vince McMahon, but rather Eric Bischoff, the man who fired Austin from WCW, the man who just seen World Championship Wrestling go out of business, the man whose WCW wrestlers have been sitting in the stands all night. Bischoff comes down and much like Vince did, helps Austin beat Rock 
for the two shake hands in the center mm, of the ring. Okay. Mere weeks after Vince crushed his competition, Vince is now hospitalized, and his bitter rival Eric Bischoff is in his ring shaking hands mm. with his top champion. What the hell? Does this mean for the company? Next oh, night on Monday Night Raw, Austin nice explains himself. Twist. He doesn't owe these people a damn thing. And more than that, he doesn't owe the WWF a damn thing. At Survivor Series 1999, Austin was run down on Vince's watch and the company just kept on going. During Austin's time away, he saw the WWF move on and he realized that after... I'm liking where this is going. I'm liking the fact that he's playing up the storyline of I got hit and you motherfuckers just kept going. Like, it was nothing. Like... A motherfucker didn't just try to kill me with a vehicle. And I just, it was just nothing. I like that. I like that a lot. After almost giving his life for the company, seeing his neck broken in that company's ring, the company doesn't actually give a rat's ass about me. So he doesn't give a rat's ass about the company. So he's bringing in the only person who hates the WWF and Vince McMahon more than he does, mm. Eric Bischoff. Bischoff enters, and if 2001 proved nothing else, is that WWF fans are f***ing tribal. Tribal enough to turn Vince into a baby face yep. by everything at Mania X7. Enough to completely erase all of Austin's heel work in one night and turn him into the old Stone Cold again. I think the only real way to turn Austin heel that doesn't A, align him with the man he's feuded with for years, and B, align him with the man who literally planned his murder, yeah. and in fact honors both of those feuds, is to have him be anti-WWF. Bischoff mm. boasts that the only reason the WWF is still in business because he fired Steve Austin in the first mm. place. It's almost like he felt pity for the poor WWF fans after WCW kicked their ass for 83 straight weeks. And so he sent them Steve Austin, for which Austin thanks him from the bottom of his heart. Austin holds up the WWF title. This is the symbol of this company and this company's a piece of trash. <laughs> For the first time since coming back, Austin is world champion, but this is not the world championship I want. He drops it in a trash can. And yeah. as he does so, Shane McMahon comes down to the ring carrying a briefcase. Turns out that Shane had a silent partner in purchasing WCW, and that someone was Eric Bischoff, creating mm. a, I hesitate to use this word, but an alliance of yeah. Austin Bischoff and Shane McMahon. Three people unified in one thing. They f***ing hate <laughs> Vince McMahon. They're completely justified in hating Vince McMahon, yeah. but now they're being total dicks about it, the best kind of villainy. Shane McMahon opens up the briefcase, he's brought to the ring, and inside is the big gold yeah. belt, WCW's World Championship. That's Austin cool. holds it up. This is the symbol of excellence in this business. This is the belt held by the true wrestling greats, Harley Race, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair. To sum up, in early 2001, you have WCW going out of business, WWF acquiring WCW, Shane hospitalizing his dad, and suddenly the stage has been cleared for Austin Bishop and Shane to rule over Vince's company with an iron fist. And that's when you bring out The Rock, and build mm -hmm. their rematch in the main event of Monday Night Raw. In that rematch, sure, keep it a cage, why not? That's when you cement Austin's turn by having him cripple the people's champion. Mm. However, at the end of that match, Triple H does come down to the ring, sledgehammer in hand, and he clears house because Triple H is the cerebral ass asshole. <laughs> he also cares about the WWF more than anyone else. He's Vince's son-in-law. And by God, he really likes the WWF Big Eagle Championship. He held it often enough. Yeah. Bischoff and Austin manage to get out of the ring, but Shane gets hit with the pedigree, and that is the feud heading into Backlash. Heel Austin. He is really, that, that's a nice, he's, that's a nice double turn, and it makes sense, bro. It's very creative. It, it works. If you're gonna have Stone Cold be a heel, you don't align him with the guy that tried to run him over, and Vince McMahon. You don't align him with them. You align him with someone that hates Vince just as much. That makes so much sense. I like, this is, bro, Adam should definitely be on WWE Creative. Granted, I don't know if uh, they would actually take his opinion seriously, but he definitely should have a job at WWE because this is actually really creative.
Austin versus Face Triple H playing off their huge feud of the year. They've got amazing chemistry together. And but now this time, Triple H is trying to fight to bring the WWF Championship back to the WWF. Now Backlash, the numbers game catches up to Triple H and many mm -hmm. Bischoff shenanigans or Bischoffigans, which sounds like a great name for a biscuit. After those, Austin retains the championship. Now, after Backlash, Austin dedicates himself to destroying all of the WWF's most beloved faces. So yes, he can attack the Hardy Boys mm -hmm. from behind, lay them out, beat people down, go feral, attack people like Undertaker and Kane with a lead pipe. He tells the locker room that no one is safe. Typical Steve Austin DTA sh but now mm -hmm. on the side of evil. We build towards Judgment Day, and one final match between Triple H and Steve Austin. This time, hell and a cell. Eric Bischoff wants to cripple Vince's company to make WWF feel like its time is running out. Bischoff agrees to the cell stipulation for Judgment Day on one condition that Triple H's career is on the line. A couple of reasons for this. It's to give Triple H that time off because booking alternatives to real life serious injuries makes me feel a bit weird. But also, this is a lot of Triple H, Steve Austin matches. Three major pay-per-view matches between the two in the space of half a year. Now, I mean, the reason this is happening is that Trips is the biggest non-rock star in the company mm -hmm. at yep. the time. But at least this way, all the matches should feel different. Three stages of hell, a world championship match with alignment switched, then Hell in a Cell with a career on the line. And mm. Judgment Day, Austin nails Triple H with a title, hits him with not one, not two, but three Stone Cold Stunners and pins the game, banishing him mm. from the WWF. Austin is systematically removing things we love that's from the so company. good. The big belt. Basically, Austin is Thanos. <laughs> He's deleting half of the WWF roster in this storyline. I like that. I, I, I like that a lot. One of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era, and all while remaining some semblance of a badass. There is no need for a cowboy hat here. After Triple yeah. H, that's when we pivot to Steve Austin versus Kurt Angle. Now, as mm. we saw in real life, it shouldn't be too hard to turn Kurt face. He's yeah. very much Mr. WWF, yeah. having never worked for Bischoff. Also, King of the Ring is the next pay-per-view, and no one's had more success at that show in recent years than Kurt Angle. In fact, we don't even have to lose the precious Angle versus Shane McMahon street fight. After Angle's feud with Chris Benoit at Judgment Day, the two can shake hands. Finally, having earned each other's respect, Angle will turn face that way, and Angle becomes the number one contender. And that's when Austin, Shane, and Bischoff attack. Bischoff announces that since King of the Ring is Kurt's special event and since he's used to working multiple times in a night, sure, he'll get Steve Austin one-on-one -on -one for the World Championship, but first, he has to go through Shane in a street fight hmm. earlier on the card. Angle beats Shane, but his injuries catch up to him in the main, and Austin pins him clean to retain the WCW World Championship. Now, the next pay-per-view is the last one before SummerSlam, what was the Invasion pay-per-view, but now, in fact, it's fully loaded. Austin brags about how he's unstoppable and how he will systematically beat every single piece of trash in the company until there is no more WWF. Just him, Steve Austin, the only professional wrestler in the world who's worth even half a damn. And that's when you run Austin versus all of the WWF main event scene in the main event are fully loaded. Austin mm. versus Angle versus Undertaker versus Kane. Eric Bischoff is really starting to get above his station. And Austin is legit pissed being put into a match with four people who want to skin him and wear him as a gaudy <laughs> Texas-shaped belt buckle. There's dissension in the ranks of the Alliance. During the main event, a fully loaded, Bischoff accidentally clocks Steve Austin with the belt, which almost costs him the title, but for the fact that it's a fatal four-way, so someone else breaks up the pin. And in the chaos, Austin manages to hit Kane with a stunner and pin him to retain the championship as Austin celebrates in the ring after the match. If you smell... Mm. The pop that that would have had. Oh, boy. Would have been stupid. Ah, the Rock returns to set up Rock versus Austin, the rematch at SummerSlam. And as well, that's a story that is going to bring a close circle to Austin as a heel. The Rock and Steve Austin cut promos on each other in the build-up to SummerSlam. The Rock reminds Stone Cold that it's always been the two of them. Rock 
and Austin. Austin mm -hmm. and Rock. The two central pillars of the WWF in the Attitude Era, reminding yep. Austin of the man he used to be. He shows some footage of himself as the ringmaster, tells Austin, yes, you helped build this place, but this place also built you. Vince McMahon may be a no good monkey ass jabroni or whatever, <laughs> just rock, says, your rock catchphrase bingo cards, but he never sent Austin's ass packing via a fax or stole a promotion from his daddy. Rock tries to cause further dissension between Austin, Bischoff and Shane and it starts to work with Austin hitting Shane McMahon with a stunner but refusing to hit one on Bischoff. Not yet. The main event of SummerSlam, Austin versus Rock. And while the first one was Austin's journey to becoming a heel, this time it's his journey back to becoming a face, realizing that Bischoff is the greater evil and coming to terms with his place in the WWF at this stage of his life. In the end, The Rock hits Austin with the rock bottom and pins him mm. to become the new WWF champion. The WCW belt is discarded. The Rock brings back the big eagle. He's celebrating with it when he comes face to face with Austin, who extends a hand, which The Rock shakes. Bischoff runs into the ring to get in Austin's face. What the hell are you doing? Austin drops him with yep. the stunner, turning face once more. The next night on Raw, Eric Bischoff vows, this isn't over. And that's when, hearkening back to a certain video I made about the invasion all those years ago, that's when Bischoff brings in the NWO. Mm. You can just buy out the contracts and you can bring them in and make, you can make the money back with a few crazy high pay per view. Like, yeah. it, it's not hard. Bischoff yeah. and the NWO invade the WWF, and that's when Vince makes a huge return as a babyface, announcing also that he's rehired Triple H. The next pay per view is Invasion. Mm. The main event, Austin, Rock, Triple H versus Hollywood Hogan, Scott Hall, and Kevin Nash. That would be sick. So, use the Austin heel turn to set the stage for a delayed invasion storyline that'll culminate at WrestleMania 18, introducing the bigger bad that is the NWO, all while hopefully not losing much main event momentum between Mania X7 and SummerSlam while The Rock's away becoming the Pince of Prince or whatever. <laughs> Austin can turn heel. There are enough just about main event talent to feud with. There's an actual reason for it happening and it builds into something that desperately needed fixing. So that is how I would book Steve Austin's 2001 heel turn. I still think it shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Just ride with Austin as your top face. People like him. They buy his merch. They're happy to see him. What, why fix what isn't broken? But here is my fix of them breaking what wasn't broken. Hey. Yo. <laughs> not mad at it i like that that was very creative very like it, it it works in that time period i could have seen that happening it's much better than the the invasion angle like this this works it was an invasion angle but it, it seemed much more fluid much more natural i enjoyed that that was pretty cool that was oh man i once again i'm gonna say this again adam is fantastic at booking some of these these scenarios and it. it just you can visualize some of this stuff happening and i thought that was fantastic yo so if y'all haven't already go subscribe to parts fun known man check check out some of their other content other videos this was this was great this was very great also comment down below and let me know would you guys have preferred this hill turn to the one we got that actually happened would you guys prefer Stone Cold heel turn to uh, to at least happen this way. Let me know down below, but I appreciate all the love and support on the channel. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.